Just a quick thing. Thank you guys for coming in. And I've seen a lot of you guys both days for multiple sessions. So thank you so much for being here and coming to the sessions. Um, I'm really happy that we can still do these sessions. And I only want you to do more of them, bigger and better. So uh, you guys coming and participating um, is everything. And uh, not to sound too uh, working, but there's going to be a survey sent out at some point. Make sure you fill that out. Um, especially the creative part. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I agree. Uh, so thank you guys so much again for your participation. And I don't know, just being great and willing to learn. So, seriously. Yeah. Thank you, Bob, for both being Tommy. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, well, on that note, let's go and begin here. Uh, welcome to the last session of Creator Camp at the Converse. This is Grow Your Audience. Uh, clearly, we grew our audience, so these practices work. <laughs> but uh, now, to echo what Ray mentioned, thank you for those of you who have been to multiple sessions and are back for this one, and for those of you who this is your first session, thanks for making it. So, uh, if you have not met us yet, my name is Anish. I am one of the directors of Strategic Partnerships in North America. And I'm Ray, I'm also known as Ray Apollo. I'm a community marketing manager at Twitch, uh, where I manage all the global community education with Career Camp. All right, cool. Let's go through our agenda here. Uh, it's broken out with what five do you mean, topics. Editor? How do you respond to your channel, programming your channel, make your streams stand out, promoting your streams, and grow through collaboration. Uh, we'll have a Q&A at the end, and uh, there's two mics here, so feel free to take your questions to the end. We will take them in English, we'll also take them in French as well, so if English is not necessarily your native language, your primary language is totally fine, uh, French will work as well. Cool. All right, so how viewers find your channel, aka Discovery, which I know is definitely something that a lot of people will talk about and ask about. Let's go through that. Most new viewers on Twitch discover your channel while your stream is live. So while you're live and they're searching or they stumble onto you, whether it might be through actual search bar on Twitch or they find you through the recommendations page, whatever it might be, it's primarily going to be when you are actually live. Uh, new viewers will use the home page, the browse tab, the search bar, it might be on the front page, they find you or the recommendations shelf. They'll find you when you're live because every time that you're live, they'll feed in and show you on various places throughout Twitch. Yeah, uh, also including the new tool that we actually announced here. Uh, that's soon. That'll be another way people can find you when you're not live, which would be a fantastic piece of just another tool to have. So look forward to that design. <laughs> so uh, we'll update this slide. <laughs> when that is all there, I'm going to pay attention to all the stuff we have. So let's dig into that. Obviously, this will look pretty familiar to you, but we'd love to take a moment to dig in. Search bar is right at the top. Uh, viewers use the search bar to search for something specific that they want. Most often, it can be a specific content type, like a game or something that they might be looking for. Uh, but that's also where they might search for through the categories, uh, tags even, or specific keywords that they're interested in to learn more. Uh, it's going to search through your channel, uh, the category that you had listed, which is effectively the game, or if it's a non-gaming category, uh, the one that you're streaming in, the directory, and your VODs as well. Your VODs can pop up as well there. Underneath the search bar, you've got the home page. Uh, obviously, this looks pretty familiar to y'all, but you've got it broken out by live and by categories that uh, we think that the viewer would like. Uh, the home page can look a little bit different from time to time as our product team is constantly running different types of tests behind the scenes to see what is causing more engagement and more viewership for channels, but this is kind of a snapshot of what it looked like before. Uh, the home page is ultimately personalized for what they watch, so you might be surprised to find that some viewers, they may not be watching the top directories of the most popular games, they might be watching more casual games or ones that don't make it to the top, but based on their viewing history, We'll have the home page just accordingly. Further down there, category browse and then category tag filters. So the browse page is really once they know what specific category they're interested in or want to look into, that's where they'll find various channels show up there. And then with the category tag filter, that's a great way, especially with freeform tags that got released about a year or so ago. Uh, freeform being you can type in any kind of tag that you want, you're not they're holding to a specific curated list of tags that used to have available. 
Uh, that's where people can search for specific niche or things that they're really looking for that may not be found through a directory. So things like keywords like competitive uh, or even like casual for that matter. And then even from a community standpoint, it might be certain tags that they identify more with, like arts and crafts or uh, you know something that's maybe more self-identity related, like LGBTQIA plus, things like that. Yeah, and I mean, I've also seen it used in terms of gaming, it's like they would put the actual part of the game that they're in, in their tags. Uh, and also, like say they were reading, uh, like this, some people read books on the screen, wow. Uh, they would actually put like the title of the book that they're reading in the tag as well. Um, so just think about all the things on your screen that you could tag that would interest the folks who are coming in, but it's not deceiving them, you know? Uh, because if I came into a stream that I clicked into that I was assuming was about something and was something else, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> Just simple as that. So, uh, the tags are important, they need help. And in case you're curious, you can add up to 10 tags per stream, so definitely recommend that you use as many as uh, you'd like up to 10, that'll apply to your respective stream. So we talked about new viewers and how they find you. For existing viewers, they're gonna find you uh, via the left-hand side navigation, especially if they're following you through the follow tab or even the go live notifications. If you are not using custom go live notifications, definitely use them because they make a world of difference. So let's take a look at that UI there. Uh, you have the follow tab right there. You have it from top to down and then a show more button. Uh, most folks are probably following more than four or five channels, so it'll show all of them there. And the left side navigation tool, again, based on recommended channels or content that that respective viewer has been watching. Uh, in this case, it looks like it's a combination of Escape from Kart Tarkov, as well as just chatting or talk shows and podcasts. And on the right hand side of the notifications, again, when you go live, that's where the custom go live notification will be. That's where a lot of other notifications will be. Essentially, every single one will be there. Uh, it's broken out by just Twitch and then my channel, my channel being the actual viewer itself and their channel. Um, that's also where you'll see that go live notification uh, pop up uh, if you are the viewer. And a notification from if your streamer is in a guest class session, that's where you also get a notification. <laughs> Sweet, uh, and then uh, we are not one to only talk about our platform. There's obviously a lot of other platforms out there, but it's not the only place where people discover your channel. And in fact, I would say probably over the past year, if not two years, there's been so many other platforms that you've probably seen viewers come from. Mm -hmm. TikTok being part of the main one that comes to mind, but even other ones like Instagram as it's gotten more video or real focused, even YouTube and whatnot. Uh, so when you think about trying to grow your audience and your channel, don't just stick to only Twitch as the only place you can market yourself or try to grow. Leverage other platforms. And definitely, if you're not doing it, ask yourself, hey, what are different ways I'm promoting people who like my content on another platform to come to Twitch? The kind of content that you make for one platform will not fit every platform itself. I know, Ray, you've said this line, so I'll talk to you multiple times. So, so uh, go with the style of content that the platform is best for. You know, YouTube, if you're gonna do traditional YouTube, like the long form videos, I mean, the length is up to you and it's also debatable. I mean, they also have short form content there now as well. Uh, if you're gonna put stuff on TikTok, make sure it's of the TikTok variety. So what I'm saying is don't just take your stream and copy paste into another place because it's not going to do as well. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so we've given a quick overview. Some of this might be a refresher material for y'all. Hopefully you learned at least one or two new things. We're gonna pivot now over to program your channel and dive a bit into that. So, what's that word, Rick? Oh boy, programming. Programming. You know, you can be a little bit more excited. You know? I, mean, I, know I, was, I was like, is that spelled right? That's why I was like, it's <laughs> programming. Yeah, the orange is a little easy. <laughs> uh, so what do you mean by programming? Programming is basically uh, your where, your how, and your when for your channel. Uh, for those of you who tuned in to our Pat to partner presentation earlier today, we had a slide similar to this. This is kind of a framework to think about in terms of when you think about your content or programming that you're putting together, how should you be approaching it? Or where can pre uh, viewers find it? How will they find it? In terms of, in this case, there's a tags example. And then when, you know, what days, what time. Chances are you all are not necessarily doing the same exact content day in, day out, every single day. Like if you are, half off to you, nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But chances are you're mixing it up and you're doing more than at least two or three types of content. And so, is it a good idea to understand and have certain content on certain days at certain times? You're gonna know better than us in terms of your community and what they want. That can be something to explore when you think about programming itself. 
So let's dive into those. The where, selecting your categories. Uh, categories are really gonna fit into ultimately the kind of content that you wanna make. Uh, but one thing I love to tell everyone is don't just do what's popular or what's kind of hot in that moment. Do what you actually want to do. It might be easy to think of it as let me jump on whatever is really popular right now and do that. Well, hey, guess what? Everyone else is doing that. So just because it's popular doesn't mean you're gonna have an easier time to stand out there. And often it's very evident if it's not a category or something that you're truly interested in or in, that will show in the stream and be reflected where you're not really passionate there. Versus doing something that you truly love and you're truly passionate about, you'll see it, your fans will see it, and they'll want to be there. We mentioned this, don't just stream in one category. Ray, I'd love to give you your thoughts here where if someone is just doing one category, I don't think there's anything wrong with that necessarily. No, it's not, there's nothing wrong with that, but if you're trying to maximize growth options, and this is like, in this case, that's what I would think, where like, you want to spur a bit more growth than normal, I would absolutely recommend using multiple categories, but not too many categories. You don't get to a restaurant where the menu has too many things on it, yeah, you don't want to be that restaurant. Uh, <laughs> but also the restaurants where the menu is too small. Uh, and so you just want to make sure that, I would like to say that when you are streaming, pick up, what you see here, three things that they can really enjoy doing. You don't have to do them all in the same stream. I mean, sometimes you can do two of them. Sometimes you can just do one. Sometimes you can do all three. And then you give yourself some variety. So you're not like burning yourself out on one thing. You give me an audience some variety. And now you have potentially three different audiences that are coming together to be one whole community. Um, so you're really giving yourself more options to grow in that fashion. Yeah, and to double down on that, if you think about running more than one category, it doesn't need to be something where you're splitting your time. Like, let's say you broadcast or stream for 40 hours a month. You don't need to do 20 in one category, 20 in another. You could even use the categories such as just chatting as a chance to reset. So let's say you've done, we we'll use this example, you're doing Minecraft, you've done three, four hours of Minecraft, you can pop over to just chatting, make it more casual, grab a coffee, have a little fireside chat type of environment set up with your audience, yeah. and then jump back into Minecraft after that. Yeah, go ahead. Take a lunch break. Eat lunch. I mean, some people like to watch people eat. Don't know why. <laughs> but you can do that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So by some people, you mean you. No. <laughs> Not at all. All right. All right. Cool. So uh, this is where you actually select the categories. I imagine you all know this, but something specifically I want to call out is the actual data that you have. Uh, highly recommend when you think about data on Twitch, use it to support decisions that you make. You want to be data driven, but data isn't the end all be all. It only leads a certain side of the story. Well, the thing that we love calling out here is in this example, you have a breakout of hey, what categories do my viewers watch? You've got just chatting, Dead by Daylight, you know, Disney Dream. Disney, it's the dream light. It isn't the dream light. It's like Disney Animal Crossing. Disney dream lights bellies, though. Yeah? Disney dream lights bellies. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, I just learned. Thank you. <laughs> you <laughs> <learned>. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, uh, you know, something like this, the main thing I want to call out here is obviously what you see at the top is just chatting is the most popular category outside of other, others that are catch all. Now, what you might think is you might say, oh man, 13% of my viewers, okay, I should do more just chatting. And I think that's a fair thought process and assumption. But don't look at it as, okay, because just chatting is the highest, I should expect to see an increase in viewership. It's not necessarily going to cause a correlation. Use it more to support the idea of, okay, people are more interested in just chatting. Maybe I do that today, maybe I don't do that. I could explore that a bit more. Let me do it for a little bit and let me see if that changes my metrics at all. And not just these particular metrics of the categories that are being watched by your viewers, but also just your viewership metrics as well. Cool. Um, and then I mentioned earlier, but definitely want to call out the bottom left here, always stream your passion. Always, whenever possible. I mean, unless your audience really enjoys watching you be frustrated, then, you know, play Elder Ring, you'll be fine. Cool. Uh, adding in tags. Uh, this is actually a good plug. So I think it's, uh, you can use Comicshow 6 plus, not just 3 plus. It's been updated over um, within the past year. But tags again, a great way to show or highlight the specific content that you may have on stream, the community that you're representing in terms of you, the community that you identify with, and then anything personal. You know, you'll see here chaos, voice acting, cozy vibes. Again, tags are a free form where you don't have to pick only from the list. 
are pre-selected or curated, you can make your own tags up. And again, this feeds into people will search different things on Twitch. And whatever you put in the tag is additional data points that can come up if they're searching words that are somewhere in the same as this. Sweet, let's hop over to the when. Uh, how many of y'all use the schedule on Twitch, the stream schedule? Okay, awesome, great, perfect. How many of y'all started using it after yesterday as we talked more and more about it? Oh, okay, okay, we got a couple. Cool, thank you. <laughs> Uh, so you all probably like on Twitter, Discord, maybe a few other platforms to let your fans, your community know when you're going live. Stream schedule, great way to make sure people know as well, not just when you're going live, but the content that you plan to do. And I think it's especially huge where if you have some people who reach your channel when you're offline, hopefully you have a channel trailer uploaded so they can get a quick 30 second elevator pitch of who you are, what you're about, but then they can also go to the stream schedule because they may not be following you on Twitter or Discord or anything like that. That's a great way for them to understand, hey, I couldn't check out Ray Apollo when he was live. When is he live next? Oh, on Wednesday, okay, great. I'll tune in at that time. We should remember that there are some folks who really don't look for stuff on Twitch outside of Twitch, and so they want to see where it is on Twitch. So I, I use this as even like a placeholder sometimes. Like, it's like, hey, these are the days that I could be live, um, but you know, when you send out, it gets a notification sent out when you do a lot, so that way it is there. But that schedule also has options to set like vacations and other repeating days as well. So there's, there's a lot of options in there that you can mess with in order to tune your schedule to you. And last point here is something we really recommend as far as one of the key indicators that we've seen which helps creators grow is consistency. And consistency from a stream schedule perspective. Streaming the same days and times as much as possible uh, on a monthly cadence. Obviously, we all have more than just streaming going on. We all are human beings and people. It can be really hard to do that same day, same time, day in, day out. So it totally makes sense if you can't 100% keep it consistent, but as much as possible, consistency would be key. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Talk about channel trailer. Uh, if you don't use a channel trailer, again, highly recommend it. You can upload it. Three main call-outs here. Introduce yourself in your stream. Think about like a 30-second elevator pitch. Uh, include a clear call to action. Hey, follow me so you can find out when I go live next. Call out your socials if you want. And then put your best foot forward. Uh, I've seen kind of two ways that creators have gone about this. The first way they've done it is that they've created a full-on 30-second, uh, more or less, you know, plus minus, challenge trailer just specifically for challenge trailer purposes. It's just them on camera, right? Introducing themselves, talking about what they're doing, etc. And I've seen another one where people will put together highlights and clips of recent VODs to give essentially an experience or trailer to anyone who tunes in when you're offline, what to expect, what's in store. And there's probably a third one, to be fair, as I think about it, a combination of the two. You spend the first five, 10 seconds introducing yourself on camera, and then you queue over to That's what I do. That's what I do. Yeah. 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 By the way, how many of you guys have a channel trailer up already? Okay. Next time, time this happens, I'm going to move them. Okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, honestly, your channel trailer can be just about anything. I just, I think you should absolutely have something that'll give people an idea. Because there are a lot of people who probably hit your channel while it's offline. That's it is possible. So I'm sure there's something there for people to even have an idea of um, when they're clicking through. Cause I think, does it auto play still? I think it's still auto play. Yeah. If yeah. you're offline and some of the comments, it will be auto play. So you, it's just one more thing to let people know who you are and what you do and why they should come and watch you when you're live. Uh, I know that I follow channels that have been offline where I've been kind of like scrolling through stuff, you know, because I saw a funny like thumbnail or something somewhere else on the internet. And yeah, I watched their trailer and I'm like, okay, actually, this would be, this would be, this would be great. So this is worth investing some time in. Cool. So we'll recap here for the uh, programming your channel for discovery. So to improve discovery by programming, stream consistently in the same categories, the main category and secondary categories. Again, we don't want to dissuade you from trying new categories. Don't take this as you have to always be in the same exact ones, but day in, day out, on average, you want to kind of keep them the same. Use uh, three plus, I'd say six plus content and community tags every time that you go live, and then set up a schedule in the creator dashboard, and you can even post a schedule obviously on Discord, Twitter, wherever it is, keeping it as consistent as you can in terms of the same days each week, more or less the same times as well. Yeah, a fun thing I've done is I've actually 
made my schedule with chat while I was live. Because I'm like, all right, what am I gonna be live? And it's also like, it's me, it's also me gaming the system saying, hey, when are y'all gonna be free? Uh, and so that's how we plan the schedule for something to switch. It did work, so there you go, another one tip. <laughs> Make chat do work for you. When are you guys gonna be here? We're not available. It's great. All right, let's hop over to standing out from the crowd. Uh, I want to call out that every single creator is unique in their own way, their community is unique, no two creators are the same. You might have similar interests, similar type of categories or vibes that you go for, but you're not going to be the same. You are unique and you are your own individual. But it's a great way to stand out from all the uniqueness that's there. So let's take a quick second and look at six examples here. So there's six Minecraft streams. Think about which one you would click and why. I've got it numbered one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I'll give you a few seconds to do a quick shout out which one you think um, you would actually click. Anyone want to pick a number? The fourth? Like I see two, I see one, I see three, three I see six. some twos, six. a lot of twos. Twos and fours, okay. All right, cool. I'm picking number three. Yeah. Number three? Yeah. All right. Two and two sounded like the most popular, but okay, number three. Okay, cool, cool. I like it, I like it. Awesome. Uh, so, let's take a look into that. What viewers see when they browse? You're gonna see a channel name, you're gonna see tags, you're gonna see thumbnail, you're gonna see title. Right? This is all right there in terms of what's on the actual screen. And I think the main thing to think about is that when they're browsing and they're getting a bit of a snapshot into from what we're displaying, what your channel is before they actually go on live, tune in for chat, things like that, what's actually there, right? Is your face visible? What kind of game or content is there? What sort of thumbnails or information would be there? Uh, people can find success without using a camera to show their face. I, I think that's completely true. Yeah, there's one perfect example. I've seen it. Uh, like, I've seen a very, like, a few, like, yeah. actually successful no cam streamers. It is absolutely possible. Yeah. Um, some folks, it's, it's probably a little harder, uh, but it's definitely possible. Yeah. But typically, having a face camera on is going to be a better chance for you to be able to not just engage with your community, but for them to be brought in into who you are, what you're about, especially, I think. Body language and facial expressions are a really powerful tool. Mm -hmm. So you take something like this and you compare it. Let's bring up one of the other examples here. You think about this stream, would you click it? No. Nah. No. Nah. Okay, uh, reasons for that. It's just a plain Minecraft stream. What does it tell you about the stream? <laughs> they're on Twitch, okay? I don't know if you heard that. Oh, they're on PlayStation, okay. Shots uh, Well, okay, yeah. To be fair, okay, that's true, to be fair. Uh, but the, the main thing here is that it barely tells you anything besides the console that they're using. Uh, and chances are the average viewer is going to see this and think, okay, next, let me go on. Right? The average human being has a short attention span. Uh, and so something like this is not really going to entice someone to come in unless they love Minecraft and PlayStation, and maybe there's a possibility they would click in there. But chances are it will not be as powerful. Um, and so, when you think about making your stream more visual, there's five key ways here that we want to highlight. Dress up your background, right? Having something going on behind you where appropriate. It could be, you know, a lot of you will have various types of swag or uh, different types of memorabilia in the background. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also have like, lights and things like that. It's obviously your room or your area where you're streaming. You're doing your best in terms of what kind of vibe you want and how everything behind you or what is visible through the camera feeds into your stream and ultimately the kind of environment you're trying to set. Using graphics, hopefully y'all are doing this, but in case you're not, graphics are gonna be a huge way to emphasize what you're streaming. And then making sure your game is prominently displayed on stream. Uh, in this case, it looks like this person is doing a little uh, animal balloons at home. Uh, also, is that like a fox? Because that's a really good animal balloon. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty fun. They do incredible balloon animal like structures on stream. Um, like, she's wonderful. I've seen her do like uh, a carousel one time and it blew my mind. Yeah, I don't understand if she did it. Okay. Nice. I don't know. Well, uh, 
you know, if we take the graphics and the overlay, I answer my own question. If I look down, oh, it's a life-size adult wolf. Boom, there we go. <laughs> now I know. And that's what's going to pull the viewer in. I mean, that's, I feel like that is a very smart way to do that. Yeah, because if you're not focused on like the this. audience and like giving a presentation, you would hopefully be able to see that it's like a size adult wolf. Yeah. You gotta go to the chat. Hey, what is your name? <laughs> Uh, and uh, the fourth point here, use your appearance to make your serious humor or weird. Again, this is why, uh, while I want to make it clear that you can find success without using a camera, and in fact, if you don't feel comfortable using a camera on the stream, I completely understand, you gotta play to your strengths, but that's also a good opportunity if you do use your camera to actually convey through the body language what you're going for here, right? Chances are she's going, I know her face is a bit blocked, but she's going for more of like the silly kind of vibe. Right, she looks like she's smiling as well. And you can see one example. B2 is also an asset. Like, there's an option like for if you want to be cameras as well. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. Yeah. So really think about, uh, not just in this case making your stream more visual, but what kind of experience do you want for viewers when they're discovering you to be pulled in? You know, you need to look inward in terms of what would interest you when you're browsing through Twitch to be pulled into a stream. And browsing is probably a great way to look at some examples out there of what's catching your eye and what are some elements you might be able to borrow or use in your respective screen. Creating compelling titles. Uh, so we've got kind of from left to right here in terms of content type, skill, progress, humor, uh, and titles are gonna give viewers extra information about your stream. And a lot of people will do uh, kind of funny or trolly things in the title, maybe even kind of an inside joke. Uh, and this is your opportunity to look and see, okay, what kind of title based on the stream that I'm doing do I want and would that bring people in, right? There's only a certain amount of character count when you're going through and browsing the directory that would uh, be visible to you as a viewer. So what are maybe about six, seven initial words you could use that would pull people in? And what do you want that to convey about the kind of content that you're doing? So let's look a little bit further here. Uh, Cheese is coaching extra Emily and 16 stars, and then you have the, uh, what is that thing called again? Like the pipe? Yeah. Oh, pipe? Pipeline. Pipeline, is that it? Okay, pipeline, all right, thank you. Oh, you mean the, come on. Um, we're gonna do questions at the end, but do you have a quick one? So, uh, it's a good question. So I think what we're kind of going for here is purple is more like laid back, uh, more easy on the eyes, and red would be a bit more like competitive, kind of hardcore. Um, but if you have feedback, please talk to us afterwards if you think it's better, we're always looking for feedback. So if there's another color scheme we can help, let's go for that. But it's meant to kind of reflect the chill versus kind of competitive vibe. And you should do this one, so it's okay. <laughs> Uh, any mistake you see is because of Ray. Let me be very clear about that. Thank you, Ray. Thank you for being the best way man ever. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but if you look here, uh, the title is showing the content type, right? And then you got on the right, and the progress, and the skill. 16 stars, so anyone who knows Super Mario 64 or has played it before, that's going to let them know exactly what they're going for here. So we got a few others. So technique, again, you have a... Oh gosh, these are cool keys. So like music symbols, one, three, five, eight, bar main, soul fist, alt, leveling, music symbols again, new sub badge just kind of goes on from there. So again, it shows content type, and then progress and skill, uh, soul, fist, alt, leveling. I don't play Lost Ark, so I don't know what that means. I don't even know what this means. What does that mean? I think it reflects the character, and the uh, soul fist is probably a class. Hmm. And then alt is an alternative. You should use better tags so I can figure out what it is next time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they have voice acting, they've got RPG, they've got a lot. But it's it, it's hopefully it's getting the point across a, a very conscious decision of what to put in the title. Let's look at a few others here. Anthony writes code. So, code right here, Python programming, what are they coding? Python. Right? That's giving away the content type. Special announcement hints. Uh, well, that is an interesting color scheme. Uh, but, yeah, that's also, uh, again, your channel name, in this case, gives away to most people, I would imagine, what kind of content the person does. In this case, it's programming or coding. But the nice thing is starting off with exactly the Python program, right? Or maybe it is uh, iOS programming, or JavaScript, or whatever it might be. Letting people clearly know exactly what programming language, in this case, is being used. 
How's the Gamer, uh, community stream, talking about why I left Harvard, answering subreddit questions. Cool. What is this? It's a community stream. What are they actually going to be doing? Talking about why they left Harvard, answering subreddit questions. Also, again, talks to progress and skill. Progress and skill does not need to be synonymous with a game specifically. You know, to me, I read this as okay, they went to Harvard, pretty prestigious, pretty well known worldwide uh, university. And they're answering subreddit questions. And if they have subreddit questions, sounds like they either posted and people ask questions, or uh, they have their own dedicated subreddit. So that indicates skill and progress as well. Uh, absolutely. This, this, this is one of those things where uh, I do like to take it because I often I still get, well, this is what you just did. No. There's so much more that you can do that. Even if you are like considering doing something else, you can be like, hey, actually, I really enjoy sewing, or I really enjoy painting miniatures. We try that on screen because it, trust me, there are people who are in that on the internet, and there are communities that you can join and have a little bit of growth at the same time. So, give it a shot. All right, we looked at a few examples, so let's do a recap here for getting viewers to click into your stream. Using eye catching visuals and compelling titles, making it easier for viewers to understand what you're streaming by combining clear titles and helpful visual elements, enticing them, kind of giving them a snapshot into why should they come into your stream, why should they click in, and then also what should they be expecting you know, when they click in there. Reaching viewers, you're looking for your content by showing your content type, you know, skill, progress, humor. Again, going back to the concept or idea of what should they expect, what are you about? What is your community about? What can they hope to experience if they go into your stream? And then letting viewers know what to expect. Exactly, I've probably said it many, many times, but hopefully it drives the point home there. Cool, let's go to the fourth section here, promoting your stream. So, why does promotion matter? Uh, I think this is hopefully relatively self-evident, but promotion lets your existing viewers know how to tune in, and then helps you reach new viewers. Uh, we are going to be our own biggest advocates, so promote yourself. And don't be ashamed to promote yourself where appropriate, in various forums, even somewhere like TwitchCon, as you're meeting people. Quick elevator pitch of who you are, what you're about. We keep mentioning elevator pitch, so actually, Ray, I'm going to put you on the spot. If you were to do a 30 second elevator pitch and you want to give them an example, can you let them know what your elevator pitch would be? Hey, my name is Ray Apollo, I'm a black dad that loves anime and manga, and teaching people things about streaming on Twitch. Ooh. There we go. Just like that. Yeah. You heard 30 seconds reference many times. It doesn't need to be 30 seconds, right? The, the whole concept or idea, um, in case anyone's not aware of what an elevator pitch is, is you get into an elevator, and then a few seconds later, someone very importantly walks on that you want to impress, right? It could be, let's say, your favorite Twitch streamer. It could be the CEO of a company you're working at. It's just someone very important that you want to put your best foot forward with. So what is that quick 30 seconds or less pitch? to make sure they're aware and they can walk away knowing who you are, what you're about, and I'll use it in uh, Twitch stream in terms of who are you, what kind of content do you do, what can I expect to experience by tuning into your stream, and why would I show up? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just staying in elevators for you to You might get that like that. You've met most of our friends for elevators. That's true, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sweet, uh, awesome. So, five ways to make your stream more visual. Send custom go live notifications. If you don't do these, highly recommend you do it. And when we say custom go live notifications, don't just stick with the basic jargon that appears. Uh, make them custom. Something that I've been recommending in past presentations is you can think of it as two or three broader themes for your go live notifications. Let's make it simple. First theme is talking about or mentioning what you're going to do on stream. Second one might be something humorous, funny, inside joke, something like that. Right? Let's stick with those two. So as you're using that to guide your go-live notifications, over time you can pick different verbiage, different types of combinations that fit into those two themes. And then we have metrics for this that show from your followers what percentage of them actually clicked and engaged with that go-live notification and tuned into your stream. So I can help guide you and understand, hey, was well, being more humorous and funny beneficial? Did it help me more to bring more of my followers into the stream? Or was it talking more about the content that was on stream? Or whatever else kind of category that you have. And that ultimately will help you better understand what is working and what's not working, rather than just doing random go by notifications across the board that don't really have similar overlapping themes. Verbalize your call to actions. So tell viewers to write your stream, to follow your channel, turn on notifications, uh, 
my opinion, one of the best places to do this is towards the end of the stream. Like, hey, I'm gonna hop off, I'll be back, you know, same time tomorrow. If you're not already following me, please do. You'll get notified when I go live. Don't want you to miss that opportunity when we kick it off with a small intimate chat while I have coffee or whatever it is. Yeah, and I'll also send that if you don't even get a bot. So you can have a bot command that runs every so often, but I would actually tweak the settings to make sure it doesn't run too frequently. I've been in chats where it runs a little too often. So you, may, you want to make sure that you're uh, make sure it's not posting, hey, I'm from Virginia, like every 15 minutes. Um, just, you know, it can get a little aggressive. Um, so, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. yeah. And like I mentioned, letting me know when to tune in next. You can even call out the scheduler on the Twitch channel. Mm -hmm. Going live, you know, next week or whatever, but take a look at uh, the schedule to see when I'm going live in the next, over the next month. Uh, you can obviously do a call to action with your Discord, get people to join the Discord server, your schedule is posted there, wherever it might be, something so that it's quick and easy and they effectively get trained to keep checking that area to see when you're going live next. Promotion on Twitch. So, continuing on here, let your followers know when you're live. So, you all, I'm sure you post on Twitter and Discord, maybe even IG Story, TikTok, wherever else it might be. Post it all and play to those platforms' counts, as Ray has mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, just because you post a story on Instagram doesn't mean that the same exact story would work on somewhere like TikTok or even on Twitch's new tool as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you want to better understand what type of content would make sense on which type of platform and leverage this kind of thing. Linking Twitch in your bios, uh, this is actually a big one, I, I'm sure a lot of you do this with Twitter, but I'm surprised how many people I don't see linking to their Twitch on their YouTube channel. There's an about panel, you can just put how to tune in, hey, check me out when I'm live, twitch.tv slash whatever the channel might be. Uh, post it wherever possible, as much as possible. Make the most of your stream content, grab clips, grab blogs from your channel, share them to different platforms. Obviously, if you have a YouTube channel, chances are you're either uploading the entire VOD as they get produced, or you're taking it, you edit it yourself, or have an editor splicing it a bit, doing more highlights. Leverage those wherever possible. Leverage it also so that you're exporting it, uh, so that it's uh, made for TikTok or made for Instagram, right? Making it more short form friendly. Yeah, and uh, a piece that I want to uh, take moving into the next part uh, next slide anyway, is when you're, and this is for YouTube specifically, when you are exporting VODs to YouTube, if you haven't already considered making yourself a playlist, don't just post it there, but say you're playing a specific type of game, or if you have a specific event that you're following along with, make sure you give your audience a way to follow a curated list, uh, rather than just random reading the story, because then they're easy to follow along, and then that increases that watch time over on YouTube as well. So, that's just one tip. Love it. And I, I mentioned analytics for the Go Live notifications. This is an example image here. Where you see the actual thing that was said. So, February 25th, tacos or sandwiches, and I would not be taking questions. That sounds like something Ray would say. I uh, think I did say that. So, it shows you engagement, shows you follower reach, right? Show a banner on screen, question mark, question mark, bacon cookies. So, it's a great way to test out the Go Live notifications. Uh, and the key thing to remember is that whatever message you set up, it's not going live to everyone all over, it's only going to be pushed through your followers. So bear that in mind. These are my notifications. Who did this? <laughs> gotcha. Wow. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. They're all those very fun. Okay. Right. Oh, we become besties over these past like 24, 48 hours, so I, I had to put it in. You got me that time. Okay. <laughs> That was promotion on Twitch. Promotion off Twitch, like we've talked about, and then Ray mentioned going into this slide now. Letting your followers know when you're going live, posting to each of the platforms, playing to those trends. Linking Twitch in your bios is obviously going to be similar to the previous slide, but don't just apply those to Twitch, apply to other platforms as well. And then uploading, you know, we have the example of clips to the short form content verticals, even Reddit, for example, if it makes sense. Now, we're not saying go and spam Reddit with a bunch of your clips. But be strategic about where it makes sense to put the clips. What type of subreddits does it make sense to actually put it in there? And use the proper tags because they also have tags mm -hmm. and keywords that you need to use as well uh, in order to reach the right folks. Yeah. All right. And the nice thing is when you're promoting off platform, you can actually pull that data from Twitch as well as people come from the off platform to Twitch. So we'll have not just the channels that they're coming from, but then, hey, extra on the bottom. They came direct, direct meeting from Twitch, or they came from Twitter, or they came from Google, right? Where do they actually come from here? 
So if you're not leveraging the data in a way that's helping you make more content strategy decisions, definitely recommend leaning into it. You can always uh, export data if you want to export or if you're more comfortable with a CSV or Excel type format, you can play with your data there. If you're not too comfortable with spreadsheets, you can view the data on your website as well. Cool, let's do a recap. Promote everywhere, anywhere and everywhere. Uh, so in addition to building following on other platforms, focus on using promotion, just start each stream with the maximum amount of viewers. So using Twitch notifications, go live notifications, uploading clips and VODs where it makes sense on the various platforms in a way that would bring viewers in and even if you're not live at that moment, know that, okay, hey, next time that they go live, I want to come. I want to make sure I tune in. How do I find that schedule? Oh, great. It's posted right there. Yeah. And I mean, one thing I do want to say about this is I've seen some folks sort of like, well, they have this thought of, well, if I don't post everywhere, I'm going to fail. And I'm like, mm, no. I mean, pick and do what makes you comfortable, but also be willing to push yourself a little bit and do a little bit more. And see what happens. Because I, I like to tell folks, yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna post on TikTok. You don't have to do all of them. There are some folks who have the, an insane willpower to do so and the time to do so, but not everybody does. So don't feel like you have to force yourself into that pattern as well. Cool. With that, we're gonna talk about a really strong strategy for promoting your streams, which is basically growing through collaboration, growing through other content creators. Uh, what you saw on that previous slide was uh, it showed uh, what percentage of viewers were coming from other channels. So you can also use that as a way to understand who wouldn't make sense on the platform, me a collaborator, or for me to kind of co stream. Mm -hmm. So, collaboration matters because collaborating with other streamers is one of the most effective ways that we've seen to grow your channel, right? If, if you share a subset of users or viewers that are also very interested in another channel or streamer, why not cross promote and cross pollinate? the viewers from both sides. And ultimately it's gonna help you engage with new audiences, members who maybe haven't found you before, but you make similar type of content to another creator. And so it does make sense for you both to collaborate in some shape or form. No. So there's five ways to make your stream more visual here from a collaboration standpoint. Rate other creators in your category, show some love, right? Pay it forward there. Especially if it's in a category that you typically stream already, Makes sense, your viewers probably would want to check that out. But ultimately, the viewers have the option to stick around if they want to or not, right? And I think it's a great way to have expectations set with them before you raid. Like, hey, we're gonna go raid someone else in this Minecraft uh, you know, category. Show some love, stick around if you want. Let's find them, let's see who it is, right? Or maybe they know that person, you're going off the data and they know, so like 55% of your viewers know about a specific uh, creator that you share overlapping interests with. You can call that out too. And that calls to the similar channels section. So other creators that your viewers are watching, a great way to guide a collaboration tool for who you should maybe work with and do a stream with, if it makes sense, and or who you should raid. And then of course, ask your chat. Uh, something that's really important. We've talked a bit about quantitative data, but qualitative data, how are you gonna get feedback? You get it from your audience. Ask it. Don't be afraid to ask it, right? You say you do something, let's say you haven't been rating and you start rating for a few days. Check in with your viewers and say, hey, I know we've been rating the past few days. What do y'all think? Do you like it? Do you want me to keep doing it? If you don't like it, let me know, you know? And ultimately, they're the ones who are coming to watch you and stick around, right? And so this is a great way to cater to them and make them feel and know that their opinion matters and that it is important. Yeah, or you can be like, I like rating people too bad because it is your channel. You can do what you want. So it's just an option. Yeah. yeah, you'd be surprised how many people, uh, as much as people like to chat, they may not be proactive in telling you what they may want. So it's a great chance to open that door and create an environment where it's completely okay and comfortable to ask. And then we got here, uh, the example was shown again, but uh, obviously it was shown in a previous slide as well, which channels have viewers in common with mine. I love that we made them all in the 20 percentages. We just kind of like made these numbers up here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and streams, you have a lot of co-op games. Uh, some of you may have discovered your favorite content creators through co-op games, whether it's Among Us that has been a big hit over the past couple of years. Obviously, any kind of Battle Royale type game, you know, Warzone, Fortnite, etc., Apex. Uh, these are great games, and you can think about the games or categories that you're streaming where it doesn't make sense to naturally collaborate with other creators on the stream as well. And there's also non-gaming content. 
Uh, there's a lot of really good examples visually shown here, but Twitch, y'all have seen, has expanded quite a bit past gaming over the past four years, maybe even more than that. Uh, for a while, for a while. Definitely more, I think, especially uh, during the pandemic as well. Right, yeah, definitely. So, like, whether you cook together in person, whether it is doing music together, talk shows, D and D, right? There's a lot of great ways to collaborate with people, and it's a great chance where maybe you wanted to explore a new type of content vertical on the platform. Let's say you don't do D and D, don't do it for fun on the side, but you're interested in trying it on stream. It's a great way to start collaborating and meeting people in that way. Mm -hmm. And of course, collaboration. One of the newest products we've had, Guest Star. Uh, it's a great opportunity to bring up other creators or even non-creators on stream with you. It doesn't have to be for just chatting, obviously that is a big part, whether you do kind of a talk show type style or interview format. You can also do it with gaming as well. Anything you want to add about Guest Star? I mean, I'm sure you've heard me talk about Guest Star a lot this weekend, so I'm just going to reiterate, just give it a shot. Just try it, and if you don't want to, I understand. You can blame me. He created it. Uh, so collaboration presence. Do some research before you reach out to someone and read about their page for contact methods. Especially if you're trying to create content with another creator. Do your research first, interview, or, sorry, not interview, but read up on them. Don't just kind of go in and uh, not do your homework, so to say. Make sure you know a little bit about it. Then you can have a sign of respect. Then you did your work to understand who they are. And you can then help you with your pitch when you want to talk to them about possibly collaborating together. Don't be a spammer. Obviously, if uh, they don't respond back to you, or give it a few days, you can kind of bump and check in. But if you just don't hear back, you don't hear back. There's no need to spam. And then spread your love. Uh, I know we've talked about the analytics pointing out channels where your viewers are watching those channels. And that's a good guide, but you may also know, even if the data is not there, who it might make sense to collaborate with. And so that's a way to fit it into spreading the love, where don't just look at your data and say, these are the only four creators I could work with. Mm. Look through all the categories that you stream and try to find them. Talk to people. Right? You're here at TwitchCon, I'm sure you've met a lot of new people. Mm -hmm. Some of them might make sense to collaborate with them. I mean, and you never know who you might want to collab and just don't be afraid to ask. I mean, I'm just be kind and ask somebody. Sometimes people will say yes because they just want somebody to ask them to collaborate instead of people assuming that they're too busy to do something with them. So, um, Ray, do you want to collaborate? Yes. Okay. No. Uh, you answered too quickly. I don't know. No, we're doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that, I know we got ten minutes, so I want to thank you all for coming here for the last session of Creative Camp, and we'd love to take any questions from you. This is the last two things you have to ask us anything. Yeah, we're fine. And then raise that thing through the back door and running. <laughs> yes. Uh -oh. Oh. Give it a second here. Hi. Hi, sorry. Um, I am a co working streamer. I don't know if you're familiar with the category, but there's been, since the pandemic, there's been a big community of streamers studying and co working and reading on stream. Yes, and we've been asking for so long to have a category uh, to include us uh -huh. all together because since the new tax system, it's very hard to find each other uh, because all the tags are all over the, the place. And so I'm just using this, it's not a question, it's more a request, and po pointing this out just because we want to have this uh, engaging, uh, you know, uh, relationship with other streamers, and right now it's very hard. And so yes, that's, that's everything I want. And I mean, I'm glad you brought that up because I actually hadn't considered that, um, like, as a category, I hadn't, you know, I just hadn't thought about it, so no, that's a really good shout. So, uh, if you haven't already, I would add that to user voice for sure. We did, we did, and yeah. We have thousands of uh, reactions as well. So it's thank there. you. All right. So now I know that I can bring it up because, like I said, I just didn't know. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hi, I'm Nassos. Um, I have a question because uh, I'm Portuguese, and uh, since I didn't find a lot of Portuguese people uh, on Twitch, uh, when I started streaming, I started streaming in English. So I'm kind of uh, thinking, how is discoverability in the, that case of someone who streams from a, a country whose native language is not English? Um, you know, how, how can we be discovered? Because right now my, my statistics say Canada and the US are my biggest audience. Uh-huh. What do you mean? 
in that regard, what's your, what's your goal then? Well, come on, come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> we don't talk about this. So what's your goal? What's your goal with, do you want a more English-speaking audience or do you want more of a local audience? Yeah, I think I, I want a more global audience. A more global audience? Yeah. So I mean, that's when, like, consider, consider time zones is a thing to do. Um, like, when you're streaming, like, with yeah. folks who are awake when they're asleep. Um, it just really, it, there are a lot of different factors that go into that. And also, I mean, make sure you use those tags appropriately as well. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's, I mean, I feel like whatever language you're speaking is an easy tag to throw in there. Uh, like, very easy. Or even languages that you can speak, throw those tags in there as well. Because there might be some folks who might hop in uh, via that too. So, um, you got options. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing I'll add there too is uh, if you haven't tried this, you might want to consider looking at your stream schedule and maybe add an extra day to your video So only do Portuguese. If you want to cater to a Portuguese audience, use the tags to make it clear that the uh, stream is going to be in Portuguese. But then see your existing community probably won't really join you as much, but see what I can do. And maybe they will because they're going to be like, oh, well, I want to learn that. There's a chance. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Hi. <laughs> hey. uh, first of all, thank you because uh, it was great and uh, I think uh, everyone here has learned something. Uh, my question was about uh, tags. Uh, you told us that. Uh, 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 sorry, uh, in French it's tag. But, uh, yes, tags. Oh. I'm so sorry. My, my French is. But my English is terrible. No, it's okay. I was like, not tax. Sorry. No. <laughs> so, uh, I'll give you a know, If you have any tax questions, <laughs> this is the guy I talk to. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so, yes, so we talked about it. And uh, do you think that it's uh, better if we change every time uh, between two lights? Yeah. Or we have to uh, just uh, do it one time and uh, we can answer with that one time? Yeah, I, I can answer this one. So, uh, there's going to be some tags that are static, or for you, they would never change, right? Probably more of the community tags. But the content tags probably would change every, probably every stream uh, when you're switching things up. But to answer your question more directly, the best thing that I recommend is 30 days, kind of three, four weeks is a sweet spot from a data perspective to understand I've used these specific tags and kind of A B test, or say it's been about 30 days. You're obviously not going to stream on every one of those 30 days, but 30 days is going to be a lot of time. And then going from there and understanding, great, I did it. What? How does the data look? No, I made 180 did I see something. More engagement, more viewers coming in, did I see less, did it not change? And that will ultimately help you understand over time what tags to keep using and which ones are not to use anymore. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, yeah. Uh, well, first of all, um, I know that there is a chat for that automatically translates uh, chat messages, so you might want to look into that. Is that okay? Yes, yeah, sir. There's a chat bot that automatically translates messages in chat. Uh, but uh, to get to my question, um, I have been watching Twitch streams for a very long time, but like actually streaming is very new to me, and I'm currently still at the point where there's usually no viewers, maybe one, maybe two. Um, and I find it very hard to um, actually talk when there's no one talking back. Uh, do you have any advice on how to deal with that? Yeah, because we all started there, right, absolutely. And it's one of those things where uh, before I would just kind of like almost just talk about what I was doing in the game. It's kind of like a way to play the game for myself. Um, but then I also just started inviting my friends to part like the, a, a chat and we would just talk, you know, we would have a conversation and that would be what I would do while I was streaming. Yeah. And you know, we would get people who would come in who would like get into parts of the conversation and they would chime in, you know, so that way you don't have to feel like you're just sitting there by yourself for like, absolutely, invite your friends, you know, have somebody, you can even have somebody in the same room with you and you talk with them too. Um, but it is hard because it's, it's a skill too. <laughs> it, it takes yeah. some time to like get used to it and get into the rhythm of it. Um, so I, I absolutely recommend just First of all, just talking, first and foremost. But then, find somebody to talk with. All right, thank you. I, I think it obviously can be weird when there's either no one there or just one or two people there. Uh, to go off of what Ray said, I think something that can be really good, depending on the kind of game that you're playing, for example, 
talking about what's going on in your mind and mm -hmm. walking people through what you're doing can also be good, especially for games where people want to learn. Perfect example would be a card game like Hearthstone. Right? Yeah. You're looking at your cards, oh yeah, what you gonna do next? You're probably thinking about it in your head, but if you say it out loud, which again, we acknowledge is a little weird at first, then that'll help, especially because the stream ends up becoming a lot. Mm -hmm. And so people will watch that. You know? yeah. Yeah. Then those thoughts become content, and that content becomes people that are living. So give it a shot. I think you, I think you can do it. You have, you have a vibe to you, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.